Hey, how's it going? This is Ike with Create or Die. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're uh, picking up where we left off with the muscle cats. That's right, bringing muscle men and thunder cats together for a beautiful new creation. So last time we talked about the actual uh, digital sculpting of the characters. This time around we're taking that digital sculpt and pulling it out of ZBrush, taking it into Chitu Box, which is a resin printer slicing program, and we'll get it all fixed up and ready to go for print uh, with supports and slicing. And I'll show you my settings for successful prints on the Elegoo Saturn II. All right, so let's pick up where we were in ZBrush from the previous episode. You can see uh, once you're finished with your model, everything looks all hunky-dory. It's time to open the Z plugin panel. We want to open up uh, the Decimation Master tab. And before we go too far, I want to go ahead and, and open up the Subtool tab on the right there and merge all, merge visible, and then select the object or tool called Merged PM3D. And then pre process that bad boy in the Decimation Master panel. That'll take a minute to think through all the goodness there. Once it's uh, finished pre-processing, decimation happens real quick. Uh, the 20% setting default is usually good. Hit decimate current, and you shouldn't really notice much of a change. I like to toggle on the wireframe mode so I can see how things look and you can see we actually went from 1.2 million polys down to around 250,000 so big improvement and that'll definitely help when we take it into uh, Chitu box for slicing then now here in the 3d print hub panel uh, we want to export to STL and if you'd like you can resize it here and first you want to click on update size ratios and I usually just select the the biggest option of the the two it presents there and uh, so yeah either one of those so I'll, I'll choose the bigger one on the left you can see how it's updated the sizes in the XYZ in, in millimeters so if you know the size you want to export it at, you can go ahead and export it here. Um, a height of 50.5 is what I wanted. I think I accidentally selected uh, 50.5 on the x-axis. So ended up a little shorter than I planned, but turned out well enough in the end. And this can be changed later on in the process. So. Once you're in your slicing software, and I'm using Chi2 Box, uh, you can resize it there. And then a good test is to just in a, on a Mac, just you know, select the object at spacebar and preview it there on the desktop. And if that works, then it should be good to go. Go ahead and open our Chi2 Box software and drag the STL onto the scene the that represents the build plate with the blue box around it and like I said you can resize it here this was a previous version that I exported too small and so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change the size and again for some reason I'm on the x-axis change that to 50.5 and it, it ended up being a good size in the end okay and make sure I have the correct Saturn uh, 2 printer set up and Chi2Box is good at 
staying updated so you can should be able to find your printer and then you just kind of rotate the model at about a 45 degree angle with the back facing the bottom because that's where the support is going to be and I usually check medium support seems to be the right strength for me um, leave most of those things those settings at, at default and make sure you have a, a raft that'll help uh, with uh, adhesion to the build plate as well as uh, being able to scrape it off the build plate with your paint scraper okay and then under settings I just want to make sure that my print settings are correct initially I had this set too low uh, I don't know what I was thinking but uh, after a bad print or two I decided to change that that bottom exposure time is super important um, to make that higher so 30 seconds per layer and I ended up doing um, five layers at 30 seconds and so that just makes sure it can stick to the build plate and minimize the chance for failed prints see that's the raft there when I went back to the model you know for some reason it automatically threw the raft in there go ahead and select the plus all button at the bottom and that'll generate your first pass of supports and things are looking good you can see the red coloring underneath the model those are the areas that need support so if you feel like you're a little light you can go ahead and just click on the model where you like and you get a little preview a little green preview of where that support will be it's pretty amazing technology and has come a long way uh, from the first slicing tools I've seen I remember seeing so you can see that goatee didn't really have any support at all so I threw a couple supports on there it does a good job at avoiding your model not putting you know supports in places it doesn't need to and then uh, with a big build plate I'm able to to print several of these so you can just go ahead and uh, clone those with the clone button at the top and then drag them around within your build plate boundaries keeping it inside of that blue line blue rectangle and then hit the slice button and the speed on that is greatly improved as well just kinda toggle the slider to get a feel for what some of those slices will look like you can see on the top right over there saying this is gonna take two hours and 35 minutes to print so not too bad and whether I would have printed one or six it still takes the same amount of time because it's printing one layer at a time and no matter how much details on that layer it'll it'll print the same so we'll go ahead and save this and I'm gonna save it to my external thumb drive which uh, initially wasn't showing up so I had to jump away and unplug and replug it in <laughs> now you can see it the no name drive I've got a folder called Ike and I'll just save this lion file straight to there I had a previous failed file that I saved over top of and now on to resin prep all right first thing you want to do when you're working with resin 3d printing is get yourself some uh, some latex gloves keep those hands clean you know don't want to be touching the resin uh, see I've reused these a couple of times so when I pull them out off the hands they're inside out so I'll just kind of blow in them to get them right side out put those bad boys on oh yeah and then here we got the 3d uh, resin printer enclosure 
and you can see I've already unzipped it but uh, we'll just kind of roll this front cover up here get that out of the way and then we've got the Elegoo Saturn 2 printer it's my new Christmas present so this is uh, the first real print I'm doing on this printer uh, prior to this print I just did a test print so first we remove the shield the hood whatever you want to call it set that out of the way and then we've got the build plate here you can see it's pretty low you want to if you've used it for printing before you want to unscrew that and take it off because there's still some resin residue on there and if I remove the vat which I need to do um, it could drip onto the LCD screen so we'll just set this aside I've got a little mat here over my table top to keep it clean and we just want to unscrew these little tabs that hold down the resin vat there's lots of threads so just lift and carefully pull that away you'll see that one part of the vat has a little lip to it which is where you want to pour from and so I'm going to pour this back into the resin bottle so I can shake it all up and make sure that it's good and mixed and before you go pouring resin back in you want to make sure you've got some kind of filter so this is a paper paint filter one time use type of deal so be a little this is what I want a resin filter plastic guide to keep resin from escaping through the sides of the paper filter and you may ask why are we filtering it the resin well great question um, what ends up happening is there can be small parts of resin that uh, was cured from the last time you printed and you don't want those chunks making their way into your uh, fresh supply of resin if you will so we'll just pour as much out of that as possible you don't have to get every drop and then thankfully this didn't get all over the underside of the the resin vat and rather than carrying a, a full vat of resin over to the printer I'm gonna put the vat back on the printer empty and then pour the resin in because that's ideal keep you from making a mess so the Saturn 2 has nice little holes to help you line up the vat which some of the other Heligoo printers did not have so some of the older ones so this is nice get that screwed on there and then I'm going to get Mr. Build Plate slide that back on have a steady grip so you don't go dropping it onto the build plate that would be bad and it's kind of a tight window 
to pour into. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up the Elegoo and move that build plate up a little bit. So we can go to tool, manual, um, 10 millimeters at a time. Just click that like 10 times. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A couple more for a good measure. <laughs> and then that's moving up out of the way. Doesn't hurt to give it another shake. And then obviously you don't want to fill it up over the max build height. So watch that. There's a nice clear line that designates where that's at. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and get a print started on the Elegoo Saturn II. Okay, so as you remember, we were in the manual uh, move section. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the back button, uh, back to home, and then the nice shiny red button here for print. Let's toggle up, hit this folder to go back. I'm looking for my folder called Ike. There it is. Okay. Now I can see my lions. Go ahead and hit print. And away we go. You can see the print uh, platform is lowering into the resin. And so we're going to go ahead and put the UV shield slash hood back on top of the printer here. Okay. And then I'm going to fire up the fan on my handy dandy venting system here, which vents into the out the window, which keeps this process odor free. So when that resin's being cured by the LCD screen. You won't be smelling the, the fumes, which for a long time I didn't have a hood like this with the previous printers. And, you know, I'm okay, I think. <laughs> um, but I decided, yeah, better safe than sorry if we're going to continue to print in, in the house. So there you go. It's going to work its magic. It's going to take um, I believe two two hours and 40 minutes or just under three hours so we'll check it out when it's done all right prints done let's check it out gonna unzip this here enclosure That all unzipped. All right, now we'll remove the hood. Almost forgot my handy dandy gloves. Okay. Just unscrew that. Slide it off. Might be a little drippage, so careful about that. Kind of give it a shake. And then put my hand under there. And we've got our 
build plate and laid it down on the rubber mat and we'll just remove these little prints there we go and go there we are and with the resin I'm using and the settings it's just a matter of using your fingers to pull the model right off of the supports okay next step is the wash and we've got the 90 plus percent isopropyl whatever however you say it alcohol in our bath with our little strainer just go ahead and pop those guys in there all right okay and we're back at the Creality wash and cure station currently it's set up with the disc for the curing part of it you can just lift that off set it to the side okay and then we take our resin bath and set it on that same spot and there's a little magnetic uh, turbine propeller whatever you want to call it inside at the bottom of this bath which will help agitate the alcohol then you can take this and hang it up over here so that it's raised up above the propeller okay and we'll go ahead and oh first first thing we need to put the hood back on So we got the hood back on. We'll power this thing up. All right. So it's going to default to the wash setting quick, which is good. I go ahead and wash that for 20 minutes and hit play. We've already done the washing, so now it's on to the curing. So we'll move, remove the lid, and then you can see I've already placed all of my little Muscle Cat characters on the curing wheel, and I've done the front side. Now I've just flipped them all over for the back side. And then we'll go ahead and put the lid back on because the machine won't start without it. Okay, and then this first setting, you want to make sure it's set to cure. For the second setting, you want to go down to slow. Whoops, slow. For time, I do 10 minutes each side, but something you can play around with. Once you're happy with those settings, go ahead and hit play. There you go. I hope that uh, helped answer any questions you might have about taking your creations, your digital creations, out of the computer and into reality. The true third dimension. Look at those cute little guys. Oh yeah. Let me know if you have any questions or, or want to dig in deeper. Uh, maybe you want to learn a little bit more about this friendly fella wildcat you let me know we'll hook you up till next time create or die <laughs>